Welcome to week 54. Had a busy week this week at university. I've managed to get some really good training in though. I still recovered from Swansea Triathlon to begin with and really struggled at swimming on Monday. Just dropped a few 50 kicks, but managed to keep the 200 paces up with the rest of the guys in the fast lane, well, my fast lane, lane four. Uh, been out on the TT bike to try and work on some handling stuff and I'll explain a little bit more about some of the training and how it's changed this week based off of what I wanted to speak mainly about this week, which is about goal setting. But I've been out and had a couple of nice little runs, uh, swam a little bit and I've ridden my bike. I've actually been on the turbo today. It wasn't intentional, but I needed to get um, quite a bit of work done in a, in a short amount of time on the turbo so um, on the bike so I wanted to, to hop on the turbo today to uh, make sure I got what I needed to do done <laughs> speak about mainly this week was the fact that these races that I'm doing over the next couple of weeks make it feel like uh, the, the the last year of planning and everything has come to fruition and um, you know I've managed to complete Swansea uh, last week and hopefully Cardiff fingers crossed will will uh, also follow suit and uh, whilst it's going to be a struggle that should be competed the whole point now is to start looking at the next uh, six six months really looking towards the end of 2019 and then looking at what the goals would be for 2020 uh, and really 2021 and I spent a bit of time sat down with a whiteboard and a, a marker pen and just uh, during during a gap in, in some of the exams at university I, I spent a bit of time looking at what I wanted to achieve and really planning the pathway to getting there and I thought it'd be a good idea to go through some of these goal setting techniques um, because they are really useful. I think one of the biggest problems with setting goals is that we tend to set goals that are a really long way away. And what often happens is it's difficult to motivate yourself by being able to do something today or tomorrow um, that might be um, really getting you to where you're going to be next year perhaps and that that's not necessarily a big motivator so I'm going to break down the sort of techniques that I use I use three main kind of approaches to goal setting and I combine them together to kind of help me uh, today and tomorrow and also with what's going to happen in two or three years time so let's start off with um, something that's quite basic and a lot of people know about and that's that when you set a goal it should be a SMART goal um, the SMART part of it is an acronym it stands for specific measurable achievable relevant and time based SMART um, and we'll go into how that kind of helps us a little bit in, in a little while the idea is that the, the goals that we set should be quite easy to kind of really be de definitive in what it is that we're trying to set out to achieve. Otherwise, if they're too vague, um, it's not an easy thing to kind of define whether a, a how you get there or also uh, whether you have got there or not. Another technique I use is this idea of having an output goal and then a performance goal and then a process goal. And again, I'll break that down into a bit more detail in a minute, but basically it's a, it's a three level um, approach to being able to look at long distance uh, goals that might be relatively vague and then looking at what goes into uh, making those happen. The final approach is how the targets, if they're very definitive, can be quite demotivating if you don't hit them specifically. So it's this idea of, uh, if you look on the internet, you'll see it listed really as being good, better and best uh, type goals. I use three Bs, I use bearable, better and best. And it's like this idea that there's an ultimate uh, good level that we'd like to achieve, but also, you know, things go wrong, especially um, if you've got a lot of goals, a lot of process goals, as I'll explain in a bit, it's important to have a little bit of leeway because if you don't quite hit them or if you over achieve them, it's important to understand how that fits into the whole scheme of things and not let that completely demotivate yourself. So, okay, so let's start with uh, what we class as output goals. So these can be relatively vague. It might be uh, somebody who might want to be uh, rich and famous, for example. That's not very definitive. It doesn't fit this idea of being a smart goal, but at this stage, it's actually okay. Um, for example, uh, one of my goals next year for 2020 and for 2021 would be to see how I fare in terms of qualification for age group uh, Olympic distance racing for Team GB and seeing if I might possibly be able to qualify. And that's actually a relatively difficult thing to be uh, smart about in terms of specific and measurable, achievable, uh, whether it's relevant and time-based. Those, those things are quite difficult to apply to what we call an output goal. So the output would be that you qualify for the GB age group, but it's difficult to kind of really quantify that. So once you've got that output, what you then do is you look at the things that go into being able to do that, i.e. what the performance goals would be to be able to achieve that. Now, um, from what I can work out from the qualifiers for, for that sort of distance at my age group, 
route, you're going to need to be swimming about 24 minutes for 1500, you're going to need to be riding around about 105 for 40 kilometers, and you're going to need to be running under 40 minutes for 10k. So now we've got some performance goals. So next year's performance goals are going to be about trying to reach uh, those performance targets so that the output goal is actually within reach. But they are quantifiable, they're very specific, and they're very measurable. Uh, they're very achievable if you have a look at the, the process goals that I go into. Um, they're very relevant because they all fit together and are they time based? Well yeah, it comes down to whether you, uh, you qualify for uh, the age group or not. So to help me on my way in 2019, because obviously 2020's goals are pretty fixed, uh, I decided to set myself some performance goals for 2019 to help me with my 2020 output goal. And those goals are to try and swim under 13 minutes for 800 meters, to, to ride uh, 20 kilometers under 32.30, and also to be able to run under 21 minutes for 5K. Now they all are relevant, they go, again going back to these SMART goals, all relevant to those 2020 performance goals uh, in terms of the age group qualifiers. So hopefully they will help me on the way. Now, I've kind of got some performance goals for, for, for 2019 for the rest of this year, but what I need to do is put together some process goals. How do I get from where I am today and in six months time be able to achieve those goals? So um, I'll put a link to a PDF or something on there, but hopefully you can kind of see these. Let's see if I can get this to focus up. You can see I've got all of the months down here. Now this is the, this is the bike sheet. So I've got all the months here and then down here I've got uh, the times that I need to be riding each month um, between now and December to be able to reach my goal of riding under 32.30 uh, for 20k. So the point is that it's a gradual thing. When, when you start to write these up, you start to see if they are actually achievable, that A of the SMART goal. Um, is it actually something that's actually achievable? So essentially in June, um, I've got my time from the, the Swansea Triathlon, which obviously was during a, a, a triathlon. Um, it's not a standalone 20k, so it should be a relatively slow time. And compared to what I used to be able to ride, it's a really slow time. And really, what I've got to do over the next six months is, is be able to average uh, to go from 32.7 kilometers an hour uh, up to 37 kilometers an hour. Now, I used to be able to ride a 10 mile time trial around about 39, 40 kilometers an hour. So, um, as long as the training goes well, I definitely see that as being something that's relevant. Now, um, is this relevant to the 2020 performance targets? Well, yeah, it's exactly uh, uh, half the distance at exactly the right speed. So if I can ride uh, 20 kilometers uh, averaging 37 miles an hour, what I need to do over the next year into 2020, double that is to be able to ride average 37, 37 and a half kilometers an hour um, for the whole 40, 40 kilometers to come in at 105. And I've done that for everything. I've done that for the swim. The swim is a slightly different case because actually I'm at my target pace already. What I've got to do is maintain that. Um, but the fact that I know I can maintain it because I've sat down and done the numbers uh, means that I can kind of just maintain that and I don't have to worry too much about improving so much as just maintaining. And it means I can put my focus into the run and the bike stuff. And I've done that for uh, the running times. So at the minute, I'm running um, 5.33 per kilometre um, to run 27.45 for 5k and then gradually it's got to come down uh, to 5.19, 5.05, 4.51, 4.37, 4 4.23, 4.12 and when I get to 4.12 that'll be the, the right pace that I need to be able to run to run sub 21. So it's all kind of stacked up and I can see what I've got to do week on week. Now, obviously that means that it's a motivator. I know that when I go out and do my intervals, I'm aiming at a specific time today. I know that I've got to go out and run a specific pace today to be able to achieve the time that I need to be able to run a 5K time trial at the end of June to be able to be on track so that I can run 5.33 per kilometer um, and be able to hit my target. So I've done that for everything, including my weight. So that should, by the end of this year, should get me down to below 83.8 kilos. It works out to be uh, 2.7 kilos per per month, which is you know very doable and well within the realms of uh, what they think is a healthy weight loss per month. They say um, approximately two pounds per week which is about um, a kilo. So that's just underneath that. And that eventually should, be, should bring me in in 2020 being underneath 75 kilos, which is my ideal racing weight anyway. So it's all there, black and white. Well, actually it's not in black and white because if you look on the, the very right hand side down here, again, I don't know if you can see this, but each of these target weights or these target times here has got a set of parameters, which I'll accept the ideal position is the middle one 
and the green one is something that would be uh, you know in an ideal world something that would be beyond what I was hoping and the red is what I class as being bearable the red is bearable the amber is better and the best is the one that's in green so the point being that if I have a slightly off month uh, and things don't quite go to plan I found in the past that I can have massive demotivators if I, you know, even if I'm just half a kilo off or if I'm um, maybe five seconds off pace with a, a pacing thing. So being able to have these, these bearable, better, best targets for everything means that I can uh, have a little bit of leeway with what I'm doing. So each of these monthly plans I've now made into a bigger monthly plan that I put up on the wall. So I've done this for June, I've done it for July, but obviously that might change. And if you can see, each of these broken down into swim, bike, run, what do I need to do, and then other. So this is kind of weight management. And I'll just read some of the things that I've got down on here. These are, uh, these are process goals. These are things that I need to do today, now, over the next month or so to be able to make sure that I've hit my, hit my performance goals at the end of this month so that that all just cascades together so that at the end of the year if I've hit all my targets I should be able to do what I've set out to do um, so for the swim for example maintain three swims a week um, stay in lane four uh, develop a straighter unilateral breathing pool I've noticed uh, when I'm swimming open water that when I'm breathing on this side and I'm sighting on the on the right hand side I can swim laser straight uh, when I'm breathing on the right I'm weaving all over the place there's got to be a pull issue uh, Jackie the coach has, has kind of mentioned that actually when I'm breathing to the right I tend to swing my arm in a little bit so I want to develop a, a, a straighter pull with that I've got an 800 TT test that I want to do and obviously my CSS test so all of those things are going to go together to uh, ensure that I maintain my swim the bike stuff two turbo sessions a week one TT session on the road a week um, and also a TT bike handling session and um, I noticed that my bike handling when I was in Swansea was not all it could be I mean these things are uh, these things are notoriously difficult they're like oil tankers to kind of try and steer whereas something like my cross bike uh, is much easier to, to kind of uh, to, to point in the right direction. So I'm going to go down to the local trading estate when it's quiet, put out some cones, uh, work on my bike handling, and then obviously I've got my my, ten, uh, my 20k time trial that I'll need to do at the end of the month to make sure I'm hitting my target of uh, the times that I need for running. I've got my interval times down here for 500 meters, for 1k, and for 1500 meters, uh, so that I know what my targets are for those intervals, so that I can uh, Im improve. And actually, this week I've, I've totally nailed those I managed to um, smash those intervals which is really good my knee held up really well um, I've got a 5k benchmark that I need to run at 2745 this month I need to do some hill reps and I've also got my strength and conditioning work that I need to do which is a classic old eight minute abs uh, video I don't know if you've seen it a little clip here hey gang welcome to your eight minute abs workout I absolutely love working from that video. Uh, thanks to my mate Pete Riley, who's a phenomenal runner and incredible drummer who kind of hit me to that. It is a brilliant video. If you ever want to watch it, it's total class. I've got it memorized up here and I just use the hit timer now, but every now and then I stick the video on because it absolutely cracks me up. Um, and my bridges and my isometrics for helping my glute work. And in terms of the weight stuff, the thing that I'm doing at the minute is intermittent fasting. I intend to do some alternate day fasting like I used to um, a few years ago when I really was super heavy. I was kind of 17 and a half stone and couldn't run, so I needed to lose weight desperately. So I did some alternate day fasting uh, for about six weeks. It nearly uh, ended my, my brain, but it worked really well. But this intermittent fasting, I've, I've been trialing it this week and it seems to work really well. Essentially, if you don't know about uh, intermittent fasting, it's where you don't eat for 16 hours and you eat within an eight hour window. So if you finish eating at eight o'clock um, at night, then you uh, you don't eat anything until 12 o'clock the next day. Uh, it seems to be working really well. I haven't overeaten and uh, yeah, it's, it's just harder on the weekends, but when you're working, absolutely fine. Uh, and obviously prepping food for work. So I've got my, my process goals here. So essentially, this this all fits into something that I want to do in 2020. I can trace it all the way back, all that stuff on the whiteboard. I sat down with a calculator and I worked out what was achievable. So we're going back to our kind of smart goals again. Is it is it achievable? Are they relevant? Are they all uh, part of what I want to do in the future in terms of uh, possibly trying to qualify for age group? And the answer to, to all of these things is, are they specific? Are they measurable? Are they achievable? Are they relevant? Are they time-based? Uh, and the answer to that is yes. I've got these bearable, 
set of best goals, so I've got a little bit of leeway. And I've got my output goal, I wanna try and qualify. I've got my performance goals, I know what I need to be able to achieve to be, uh, you know, to be competitive, to possibly qualify. And then day-to-day -day process stuff, I've got it all here. I've got it listed out day-to-day uh, -day what it is that I need to be doing. And, and it means that I'm motivated now to, to kind of do something that I'm gonna be doing in 2020. Anyway, it's, um, it's a definite, uh, thing to practice uh, these goal setting things and, and it appeals to my sense of process and being able to write things down and seeing how it all fits together. Um, it works for some people, it doesn't work for others. I know goal setting isn't for everybody but uh, it definitely works for me and so this is going to be me going forward now. Um, has it worked this week? Yeah it's been good. I've, I've done a turbo session, I haven't done two turbo sessions but um, this is the last week of it being chaos. I've been out on my TT bike, I've done my bike handling stuff. Uh, it's horrendous, it's got to get better. Um, I've done my swims that I'm supposed to do uh, my running sessions have been really good so I've been uh, hitting my intervals and, and everything so far uh, has been going really well. So anyway, I know this has been a slightly longer video. I wanted to try and explain a little bit about um, what it is that I'm doing going forward because um, that's the whole point of this is it's about going forwards. So for this next week, uh, it's going to be a slightly tricky one. I'm going to have to try and cram in some of my training that I'd normally spread out over the week, particularly the bike uh, stuff because uh, we're going off to Amsterdam on Thursday. Thursday I think until Monday or something um, so my video next week may be on Tuesday or Wednesday but it, it will be there um, but I'm gonna have to try and uh, keep all the run sessions when we're in Amsterdam because it's easier to take that kit and I think it will uh, it'll be a lovely place to run should be pretty flat right so we'll go from there and uh, that, that's the plan for the next week and I guess I'll see you in week 55 have a good week and I'll see you around